Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. We are joined by very special guest, the natural progressive. Uh, so we are in we are in very unique times here, Chris. Um, how are you doing through all of this uh, quarantine during a pandemic? Well, I am what you would consider, or some crazy people consider, an essential worker. Um, so I'm supposed to be at work. However, I'm having a really hard time figuring out how um, chemicals, garden chemicals, are an essential um, work. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I'm sure gardening is really essential. However, chemicals for gardening are not essential. There's other things you can do that you can, things you can pick up at the grocery store that, that will do the same things that these um, chemicals will do. So anyway, yeah, I, I've been sick. I've been sick for a long time. I've, I started getting a fever two weeks before Christmas. So I'm pretty sure it's not coronavirus. However, <laughs> um, since the, the fever was going on so long, you know, in December it, or late December, I went into my general practitioner and got tested um, for, for all kinds of things, not coronavirus at the time, because that wasn't a big thing back then. That was way before all mm -hmm. this happened and ended up having some markers for um, autoimmune disorders. So like really high markers for autoimmune. So I, I've been working really diligently trying to figure out what's going on there because I haven't been feeling well and I've had joint issues all my life, muscle pain, all that stuff, um, joint, every, just lots of trouble. So I was trying to get through that diagnosis. So I'm using all of my HSA money to get through this diagnosis and then the coronavirus comes up and I, and in January, I was following it in other countries and thinking, oh, my God, you know, with all the tra air transportation, it's coming here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I started focusing like all my attention on that. Meanwhile, I'm sick. I have a fever. I've had a fever since two weeks before Christmas. I'm dying. You know, either I'm I'm dying of heat or I'm, I have chills from hell. Uh, one way or the, one one thing or the other constantly. Like that's mm -hmm. been my life for the last few months. Um but still going to work and then hearing about this coronavirus and getting scared because if I have an autoimmune disorder, I'm probably mm -hmm. more susceptible to having a severe case um, with this coronavirus. And meanwhile, none of the governments are doing anything around us. I mean, no one even mentioned it till um, March really on our local news. Mm -hmm. I was, I was reading about it, you know, in Washington and, and a couple cases in New York and, and all that, but what was happening in China and Italy and all that. So you know this is gonna happen here and we are not learning from them. So <laughs> I, I started calling in sick and I pretty much used up all my sick pay. And then I finally went to my doctor and I'm not thinking I have the coronavirus obviously because I, I, I was sick way before that was a thing. So I went in because I had shortness of breath. I have a fever. I've had a fever for a long time, but the shortness of breath woke me up in the middle of the night. So it scared mm -hmm. the hell out of me. And like when I start, when, when I talk a lot, you'll start noticing that my voice kind of clamps down mm -hmm. because I can't get the, all the air out, all the words out. Um, so I, start, I went to the doctor. I had a dry cough and I had one day of like severe kind of flu symptoms mm -hmm. one day and then it was gone the next. Um, which seems to be a common thing with the coronavirus. And my husband works at the airport. That's another important fact to know. And my daughter, she she quit there, but she was working at a laboratory that tested for the coronavirus. And she was telling me they didn't have to wear masks at all. And, and they opened the samples and, to process them. Without masks? Without masks, yes. Without masks, it, yeah. And she said, well, they're frozen and they're just handled like any other sample in, in the lab. So for any other disease, they're handled the exact same way. So she wasn't taking it seriously because the lab she worked at was not taking it seriously. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh, all this exposure. And then I have another daughter who 
um, is in the medical field. She's uh, a medical assistant. She works with people in hospice. Mm -hmm. So I, she came to visit like a few times and after this all started, I'm like, why are you coming here? And she was bringing a friend who was coughing all over and, and like, Oh, it's okay. It's just smoker's cough. It's just fine. But still, you know, after, after all these protect things were going, I thought, people aren't taking this seriously. And so I'm getting stressed. I'm getting anxious. And yeah, so I finally decided to go in and, and take a test just in case. Um, it, I did get exposed. So I went in and talked to my doctor. I had a fever. So, and I had the little cough and shortness of breath and, and all that. So she decided, and it freaked me out. She's like, we'll we're going to test you for COVID, but first you have to take the flu. You have to do the flu test and then you have to do a strep test. And then if you're negative for those two, which you have to pay for, by the way, <laughs> <sighs> A little bit of knowledge there. You have to pay for those. If, so, you know, the pharma, big pharma is going to get their money one way or another. So, yeah, you have to pay for those first your, or your insurance company. They sit your insurance company, but some people don't have insurance. I have insurance, but every, every bit goes, you know, towards my deductible or, mm -hmm. or whatever. And I only have so much time to get so much testing in before the deductible period starts over in June for us. Um, yeah, so I had to take those two tests. Both were negative. And so I went, uh, they went ahead and did the coronavirus test, which is very uncomfortable, by the way. It's horrifying. And I had a sinus infection as well. And and with my sinus infection, it's like either my nose is running like crazy mm -hmm. or it's dry as hell and just super painful. And when they're stiff in that swab, like clear up your nose, as far as they can get, it's very, very painful. I'm just telling you, it's painful. Uh, yeah, I want people to get tested for this, but I'm just telling you, be prepared. It's painful, mm -hmm. but it's all dry. And, and so I was researching more about, you know, false negatives and all, because I did get tested negative. Sorry, jump. It took two days to get the test, but in hours that test can be like not efficient after hours. Really? Yeah. So 30 up to 30% of the, the negatives that are tested are false negatives up to 30%. Some places say it's 10 other places say it's 30. So, you know, whatever you want to, to believe there's actually a, a few videos and a lot of articles on it. Like over the last two days, there's been articles talking about how China changed their whole testing procedures because of the false negatives. Really? They started testing, um, doing lung scans instead of those tests to confirm because there were so many people, they, they were pretty positive they had it. And and it's really um, sticks out the, the way the lungs look in the, in mm -hmm. the scans. The, it's different than any other like viral uh, lung infection or anything like that. Different than normal pneumonia, different than normal viral pneumonia where it attacks the lower portion of your lung mm -hmm. so okay you were going to ask a question and i interrupted sorry no it's all right. so so you've tested negative but you feel like based on what you've read online you probably might have it maybe but i don't know it also right. could be my my autoimmune disorder because when mm -hmm. i went in last time and then i got that test i also at the same time had the blood draws that my rheumatologist recommended i get that i haven't been able to schedule through the hospital but i was able to get through my uh, local small town practitioner mm -hmm. and and those tests came up more with autoimmune things but i couldn't get the most important test which was my pulmonary function test which has to do with the lungs and what i what i tested for um my autoimmune disorder highly affects the lungs in almost the exact same way as COVID does mm -hmm. so it's really weird it does almost it attacks the lower part of your lungs causes fibrosis in your lungs and almost the exact same thing. So um, it probably is the autoimmune for me personally. And since I've had the fever since way before and, and everything. So yeah, it's probably that. But just goes to show you, even if you don't get COVID, if you don't contract COVID, it's going to affect you because 
the, the hospital system's overwhelmed. I can't get the te the other test. I need to get my esophagus test because that's the other thing it does what I tested for. It mm -hmm. attacks your esophagus and, and makes it hardened so you can't really swallow or anything. And I have a, I've had a hard time swallowing pills over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So kind of worried about that. <laughs> I haven't been able to get that my esophagus tested you have to do that at the hospital it's not a blood draw you can do at your local clinic and i had to get a i'm supposed to get a pulmonary function test because that's the first place this disease that i tested for attacks just like covid so so you're saying the hospitals where you live in utah they're overrun with covid patients now well they're not calling them covid patients they've been stating for quite a while that we've had an, an unusually high um amount of flu but they're not testing flu there's a lot of false negatives in the flu as well so if they have the flu symptoms they diagnose them as flu and they've even fauci admitted that that, that happens <clears throat> and utah was particularly high in that and we have a huge religious population that you know does the meetings in church and and mm. all kinds of other meetings and the missionaries that just came back and had a big party even after, you know, they were coming home from countries that were closing down. Um, and then they come home to a big party, people in the parking lot at the airport. It's do you do you think that people in smaller towns or more rural areas are not taking this seriously enough? Like they think, oh, it's just a big city problem. We'll be OK. Do you think that's part of it? <laughs> yes, but they're not immune to thinking that because of, of the scare that they're they're running on the grocery stores and just grabbing everything they can. They're like, oh. yeah, big panic. So we're gonna go and grab everything we can before it runs out. So we've had the run on the grocery stores. I, I haven't been able to find flour for weeks, but since I've known about this since January, since January, I've, I've, I don't do the shopping, but I've told my husband to, to buy extra food every single week since January. So we have a quite a good supply of food and toilet paper. We've had it before the big run on all that. So, um, I've kind of been telling people to do that anyway, because we have so many other issues that this is. Oh, we lost you. Chris, we lost you. Oh my God. I don't know what's going on. That's right. Conversation. I'm just so. writing down the time code so I know where to cut it. But um, so you were saying, so you, you, you were tested negative for this. You don't know if you have it. You think you might. Have you been given any, I mean, have you been given any sort of medication or treatment or anything for the symptoms and everything that you do have? Um, they gave me no oh, man. We it froze up again. Are you there? Hey, are you there? Yeah, it just froze. It's, it did the same I thing. Can't it just froze. You, you can't hear me? No, I can't. Now I can. Okay. I couldn't hear you for a minute. Yeah. Oh my God! I don't know what's going on. I don't have ever had this problem. And I, I usually host a whole bunch of people on my channel too. <laughs> yeah, it froze up. Um, let. Where uh, did Where did you lose me? I lost you. Hold on a quick second here. Let me write this down. Um, uh, Um, okay. Uh, so you've tested negative for it, but you have the symptoms that lead you to believe you might have it. What medications or treatments have they given you for the symptoms that you do have thus far? 
they gave me amoxicillin or something like no augmentin sorry augmentin mm -hmm. antibiotic okay have but you it hasn't done anything it hasn't reduced my fever nothing so i still have the sinus issues exactly the same as before um nothing's changed at all the other problem is my with my work because i've ran out of sick pay um actually while i was tested this is another interesting thing that maybe would help other people trying to navigate all this um while i was being you know being tested like the days the, from when i was tested to when i got the test my company paid covid pay um after I, my test came back negative they're they're not going to pay anything and i'm out of sick pay i'm out of vacation pay um, and they want me to go into the negative of my vacation pain. I'm like, I don't know when I can come back. I can't even get to my rheumatologist till the 20th of May. Um, and that's a video appointment, not actually going into the office. So, but they did pay my husband because he works under me part time. <laughs> they paid him too. So we both got paid for two days, but now I'm, I'm not getting paid. I'm not getting paid anything unless I go into the negative, which really isn't getting paid if you're going into the negative. So they they really don't have any options for you um, once they run out of sick pay. And this is a company that, that has 500 plus employees. So they are not required to pay two weeks sick pay. My company gives us 40 hours, which I already use trying to diagnose my, my autoimmune disorder get that fully, you know, in hand. And so I don't have anything left. I used all my vacation that I had and all my sick. So, um, and this now is me go in the negative and there's no job. I mean, there's, this isn't a job you can do remotely. I, like, no, no, I can't do my job remotely and I'm considered an essential worker and yeah, they just don't have any they, they want me to get a doctor's note. I already have a doctor's note saying that I'm not supposed to return to work until I don't have a fever for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, I got that that note, but now they, they want it to say COVID. Otherwise, they can't give me COVID pay, which is a separate and different thing. But the thing is, if you have an autoimmune disorder and a fever and all that, you have a secondary morbidity off the bat. So if you get COVID, it could be more devastating. So you, so it's like you need a doctor to write a note saying that you're more susceptible to COVID and that why you should get COVID pay basically? Yes. If it doesn't mention COVID, just, I mean, just following the normal doctor's orders of, and both my rheumatologist and my um, primary said, do not go back to work until you've been fever free for 24 hours and you feel better. I have done neither of those things. And I almost went to back to work with, I almost said, screw it. I need a paycheck, mm -hmm. you know? And that's what, what's forcing people to spread the disease more because if they don't have pay, they, they have, and they're like choosing between their life and putting food on the table for other people, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a really tough position to put people in and, you know, yay for the small businesses fit on the, what the 50 and under are going to do, but 50 to 500 are forced to pay. And then on top of it, my company is a garden chemical company. And I find out that Brazil is paying them tons of money, giving them huge tax breaks for just being a, a chem, a pesticide company, like $2.2 .2 billion a year in tax breaks in Brazil. And, and, they can't pay me freaking sick to stay home. So I don't get the infection. I mean, I might have it already, but if I don't, and I do get it, I'm toast probably, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I'm already having lung. The, the autoimmune disorder I have attacks your, your internal organs, especially your lung. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. <laughs> uh and on top of that, we, we were on a town hall call with our Congressman, Chris Stewart, and he was answering a question for somebody. And I just came in as he was answering this, this question. And I don't even know what the question was because I just came onto the call. We didn't get notified and just in the start of it for some reason. 
but he said the biggest threat to our children's future is socialism. That, that's what I came into the, the call on is this. Okay, so I'm like, are you kidding me? And so I immediately like, how do you ask a question on this? And, and I looked it up and found out how to, to ping into the, the town hall and, and ask my question. I didn't get a chance to, I did call him, his office later and ask him this question, but this is what I wanted to, to tell him and ask him. So I wanted to agree with him and ask, when will all of you stop the, the corporate socialism? For one, <laughs> you know? it's like, when are you going to, I mean, yeah, I agree with you about socialism being a huge threat. It's the corporate socialism, not the socialism for the people or just helping people, mm -hmm. and individuals, you know, be happy and compete. But, oh my God, there was an old man, really old man who really reamed him and it was fantastic. I wish I could remember exactly what he said, but he ripped him about the corporations getting all the money and not helping the people. Um, an old guy, you can tell he was an old veteran and he just um, was amazing. I, I, I wish I would have recorded that because he would have been the best, the best to just play his message. Um, and that was somebody in Utah, an older guy in Utah. That's just impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so... That's pretty much, I mean, I just wanted to make sure, oh, oh, that I got this information out. And by the way, I went there and I donated masks. Like we have an, an abundance of N95 masks for a couple of reasons. A good friend of ours worked at the hospital and they used to just toss out bags and bags of them. Mm -hmm. And my husband did spray jobs on, on cars, auto spray jobs. So he had some. So we have we had an abundance of them, and I took them um, a couple bags of in ninety five masks, and they said they couldn't accept donations, that they were just instructed from above the corporate leaders of of their clinic, they could not accept the donations. However, that was what the nurse said when I talked to my doctor. I'm like, listen, I know you're not supposed to accept these. Why don't you just take them? stash them somewhere until you're able to <laughs> until they tell you you can because they're gonna need them mm -hmm. and i want my local caregivers to have them you know and who's going to donate to a small clinic like that you know it's just a two doctor clinic so i wanted to make sure that they were taken care of and i encourage people to share your supplies be yeah. freaking civil and if you have an abundance of toilet paper if you went crazy and bought a pallet of Toilet yeah. paper, freaking share with people. Don't yeah. be nasty. I, I saw someone in my neighborhood that's actually really warm my heart. There was a box just on a park bench uh, uh -huh. from some local woman who makes like uh, toilet paper from like sustainable paper. And oh, nice. she just, there was just a box and she said, help yourself. And she had her website. If you want more and put her email address on there, it was just like really heartwarming. She just had it on a park bench. And I walked by with a buddy of mine and there was two rolls in there. And I said, I don't need it. I'm good. He goes, I'm good too. And we let, we left it there. <laughs> oh, instead of hoarding it. Yeah. We I didn't need to hoard it, hoarders. you know? Yeah. And it's just like, uh, that's more, that's more of what we need. I want to share this, this article that you sent. So our viewers can see this before, sure. um, before we go here. Uh, I want to show. Yeah, right there. Um, so this is an article. Um, okay, so let me put this. Actually, no, it's not doing it now. Where is that? It's not on the screen. <laughs> All right. Damn computers. Oh, here they we don't go. They cooperate. <laughs> um, well, I'll just do it the old old school way. I'm just gonna have to put this right over your face. Forgive me. Um, no, I don't care. You're fine. Don't um, worry. But this is the article you sent me. Uh, that just came out April 1st. If concerned about false negative coronavirus, they'll self quarantine anyway, say the experts. So, really, this is, this is um, they're talking about we're not sure about all these tests that you talked about. Um, the tests will never be perfect, said a doctor, Angela Kellen, an infectious disease expert at Brown University. You're going to miss people, particularly early in the disease, with not a great specimen. And it's, it's too soon to know how many tests are producing false negatives. So this, this goes into what you've, you've been talking about and how this is actually affecting you. Because, you know, if you did have it and the test was a, was a false negative, 
that and positive I went back to work anyway, and I have an autoimmune disorder, mm -hmm. I could be totally screwed. Yeah, and, and you could be the totally screwed. Group of people in the U.S. are getting it. If you go to the CDC website, it's it's like twenty five to forty nine. Mm -hmm. That's that's me. <laughs> yeah, on. and not to mention. <laughs> Since your company won't give you COVID pay unless you're diagnosed with COVID you, and you're forced to go back to work because you need the money and then you could get it, put yourself at risk, you put your coworkers at risk. This is just, the, the, this, all this, your, your, your individual example just shows the thing that all of us have been talking about. This, this pandemic is showing how evil mm -hmm. and dangerous capitalism is. Yeah, and all the holes in our system. All the holes in our system. Yeah. And the stimulus plan, which was just a bunch of goddamn breadcrumbs they threw at us, it was $4.25 trillion for big corporations. And your company- aren't giving sick pay to people. Yes. Your company is getting getting stimulus money. They're getting tax breaks from Brazil. And they can't, They your company should be given money and forced by the federal government, not make, you better do it, but like this money goes, yes. tell your staff, anyone who's sick at all, stay home, you get paid. Right, no questions asked. No questions asked, you, you gotta- don't, you, get, don't go overwhelm the doctors and, and the healthcare system no. by trying to get a fucking no. I mean, I've been calling my doctor, I, I've been on the phone twice a day for the last three days trying to get a doctor's note that says COVID. My doctor isn't there or busy or I'm like. Yeah. And you're that the fact that you need this note is putting a burden on the medical system. Yes. But you need this to pay your bills. It's such bullshit. You're like caught in this horrible thing. You should be getting paid and you should stay home. You have a fever. Stay home. Let's not even risk it. Whether the tests are conclusive or not, stay home for your own safety, for your coworkers' safety, for everybody. And I am. And, and you are, but how are you going to pay your bills? Like you're forced into know. this position. All I know is my daughter, Ariel, I've talked to you about her before. She lost her mom, um, her biological mom and her stepmom. She lost her mom and she begged me, please don't go to work while you're sick, mom. Don't do it. Not mm -hmm. right now. Don't do it. Yeah. And, and that, you, it's heartbreaking. If, it's you heartbreaking. Can't, if you can't get this note, your option is apply for unemployment. Hope that you get that. You know, you you're get it if you're employed technically. Yeah, you're technically so yeah, you and can't I'm not technically furloughed. I'm just out sick on unpaid leave. Yeah. Or on vacation borrowing from my future vacation that I don't know if I'll ever earn. So what the It's insane. <sighs> it's an insane position. Well, um, you know, Chris, I appreciate you you reaching out to me to tell me your story because I'm I doubt your story is unique, unfortunately. There's oh, probably sure. people all over America dealing with some version of this. And because of this stupid capitalism, people are like, socialism is dangerous. Shut up. <laughs> Sh yeah, you yeah. can say it. Shut the fuck up. The I'm fuck so, up. so, we just gave four and, four and a quarter trillion dollars worth of socialism for a bunch of corporations. To the wealthy. Don't tell me you don't like socialism. You're, you're voting for socialism, Congressman yeah. Stewart. Of course. <laughs> And it's like, what we need now is more democratic socialism. If we had Medicare for all, mm -hmm. <laughs> this wouldn't be an issue. If we had a, you know, Trump cut the, the, the damn pandemic task force. Like Cuomo got rid of hospitals in New York. He's, he's lost 20,000 hospital beds over the last 10 years. And everyone's telling us both these political parties are so full of shit. They're all on the take. Don't even get me started on the politics, but just think how many people are losing their healthcare right now as they're losing their employment. Yeah. And if you have to get tested for the flu and for strep before, and you have to pay for it mm -hmm. you, before you get the COVID test, which is the standard, I, this was just last, last week that I went through this. Um, pretty sure it's still that way in a lot of places, maybe not places that are highly infected. It's probably easier for them to get the test, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, you have to pay for this. And if you actually are positive, the test is, is free not not the flu and the strep but the covid test is free but you still have to pay for your hospitalization and all of your treatment so right even people with <laughs> <-A> insurance <laughs> if, even if people with insurance get this and it gets severe and they have to go to the hospital they're still going to get stuck probably with the 20 to 30 thousand dollar if that if not more yeah. bill even with insurance with insurance without insurance yeah you're you're dead in the water you're bankrupt it's, 
this country is going to be completely bankrupt. There's going to be 30% unemployment. And the corporations were just given a bunch of money to go swoop up and buy everything up, just like they did in the last housing crisis. Do you but, think everything's ever going to get back to normal? I don't know. I wanted to, but I don't know. I don't know how this is going to play out. And there needs I don't to be. I see it going back to normal anymore. I don't. I mean, well, there's going to have to be. We're going to have hurricanes. We're going to have tornadoes. Mm -hmm. We're going to have, you know, hurricane season starts June 1st. And we're going to have all these people um, in hospitals. We're going to have a lot of people displaced. You can't just sh shelter them all in a big convention center or something like they used to do because that would be just a petri dish for the virus. Yeah, and right what now... are we going to do? We had earthquakes here. Yes. Earthquakes in Idaho. Scariest shit I've ever been through was like the 6.7 earthquake that hit... Um, not mm -hmm. like 20 miles from here, but man, it shook our house. It rocked our house. Yeah. I know you're probably used to earthquakes. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Scared the hell out of me. Yeah. And still terrified. You know, we're still feeling aftershocks and you'll see our lanterns like swinging back and forth. And Wildfire so season is coming. Uh, yes. And then there's that yeah. flooding. Um, All the convention centers right now are being, at least in LA and, and other big cities, those are overflow. Centers. Those are, yeah, those are overflow hospitals right now. Yes. So, so what are we going to do? What are we going to do when all these, these um, because of the environmental situations, when all of these stack up on top of each other, this uh -huh. is a domino. This is the first domino. And clear as day, I see this being the first domino that's going to just collapse everything. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm sorry to be a bummer, but... I want people to be prepared, you know? The federal That's government doesn't give a shit. When things are available. <laughs> the, the federal government doesn't care about us. They just made that abundantly clear. Yeah, they, they give, absolutely they do. Don't, they don't give a shit. Here's 1200 bucks. $1,200, that will pay my mortgage one month. It won't pay for anything else. Good luck. So, yeah. It's yep. it's nuts. Well, well, Chris, I hope you, uh, I hope you get better and, uh, <laughs> you know, and you know my 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 heart's with you, and uh, you know I wish there's something I could do. Um, check out your channel, everybody. Watch your channel. Yes, do that. Natural Progressive Mondays and Wednesdays, um, Mending Madness, Women's Wednesday, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. That would be 8 p. No, <laughs> that would be 6 p.m. Pacific. 6 Pacific, <laughs> which would be 9 o'clock uh, Eastern. Eastern, yes. Monday and Wednesday. Okay. Check it out, Chris. Uh, yes, thank you so. Community. Yeah, so. join the community, be a part of it, get involved, um, and it's time for a general strike. It's yes, it is general strike. We have all the power right now. Yes, don't forget it. All the essential workers, stay home if you're sick, and stay home, call in sick anyway, and join a strike until they freaking change. Because right now we could change them real quick. They're dependent on us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Um, really appreciate it, and uh, stay safe and stay in touch. Thank you, Graham. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Hey, everybody. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification button and the subscribe button, even if you've done it before because they're unsubscribing, many of you, every day. Watch the ads all the way through. If you click skip ad, I don't get paid. Also, support us at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockman.com slash Graham Elwood. Rockfin.com is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. All my videos are on Rockfin ad free. Thanks for watching.